Hey everyone, I am Scott Stokely. This is what is in my bag. Pull up, pull up, pull up, like a Winnebago. And I came here with the walls. We came here to play though. This got my amigos. This got my amigos. This got my amigos. This got my amigos. Oh, I'm just so dynamic. On another latitude, they can't stand it. Yeah, I'm a rocket boy. I stay blasting off and I was never planning on that. Hey everyone, I am Scott Stokely. I am a past uh, Guinness World Record holder for the longest throw of a flying disc backhand, Guinness World Record holder for the longest throw of a flying disc sidearm, bunch of other world and national titles, uh, US Open and national singles titles, bunch of world pairs, pairs titles, uh, most of them back in the 90s before I aged, <laughs> but um, I am now back on tour and I'm promoting my book, uh, my autobiography, this, uh, well, Scott Stokely Growing Up Disc Golf, and I'm also teaching full time on the road. So I'm doing private lessons. That's how I make my living now. So come out, check out my, uh, I'll check out my lessons. Okay, so enough about me. Uh, now it's about the discs. So I am not sponsored in a traditional sense. Um, I don't pay for any of my discs. A bunch of different companies will all send me the stuff that I throw in, which is fantastic. But I, I don't fit the mold of a traditional sponsor player. I'm MP50. Um, even though I won, I think, 16 of my last 18 Pro Masters tournaments in the last couple of years, that still doesn't really move to me either compared to the, the open guys, so I don't really fit that mold. Um, I also like working with a lot of the smaller companies because everyone's putting out good discs these days, and uh, there's gems to be found everywhere, so I like to mix it up. I like to work with all my friends. So with that in mind, I'm starting with my putter. I love the Berg. Absolutely love the Berg from Costa Plast. Probably my favorite disc right now. Uh, it is the slowest flying disc ever made. I mean, this disc does not fly. Now, there's a reason why that's a good thing. I'm sorry, I can't help. I'm going to have to teach as I go. So there's a philosophy that says you want to throw the slowest disc that you can reach the hole with. General rule, there's exceptions to this, but as a general rule, that's what you want to do. And the reason why, and I'm just going to make up the numbers here, but if I'm throwing a 150-foot hole and I throw the Berg 10% too hard, probably flies like 157 feet. Throw a traditional putter 10% too hard, it flies probably 165 feet. Mid-range flies like 172 feet. A driver flies 184 feet. A high-speed driver 197 feet. Basically, that same 10% error, the faster the disc, the more you're penalized for it. In other words, it creates a larger margin for error the slower the disc you fly, or that you throw. The bird, because it doesn't fly, means it is really, really hard to get the distance wrong. Uh, if you hit your line with this disc, it's going to be by the hole because your distance is going to be plus or minus a few feet of where you're aiming because of how slow it is. So I absolutely love this disc. Um, as a traditional putter, which I like using for jump putts and a little bit, anything longer than the Berg is going to fly, but still super slow. I like the, the Ion from MVP, the Warden from Dynamic, and the wizard from Gateway, and they all, sorry, I'm gonna offend three different companies, but they're, they're all the same disc. <laughs> they all fly just perfectly straight, perfectly true. Uh, you want a putter that flies straight, any of these three are gonna be perfect for you. Uh, really, it's based on the temperature and, and the grip. Um, they have three different grips, there's three different feels, but they fly the exact same way, so they're pretty interchangeable for me. I carry the basic range of mid-range, um, I throw the harp as my overstable mid-range. I throw a suspect as a, it is a straight flying mid-range that will bank hard at the end. So it becomes, when, it's, when it slows down, it's overstable, just like the harp, but it doesn't fly that way early in its flight. So uh, if I want the disc to be overstable throughout the flight, it's the harp. If I want it to fly straight and then bank hard at the end, it's gonna be the suspect. The truth, straight flying mid-range disc. Uh, I just absolutely can't go wrong with this disc. It just flies straight. It just does exactly what you want it to do. And then, uh, man, this is one of the best gems out there. It's the Piwaka Waka from RPM Discs. Uh, this is an understable mid-range disc. What I like about it, and there's not a lot of discs that do this, is that when you throw this, it's understable, but it does not just fade hard at the end. Uh, an understable disc that fades hard is extremely squirrely. It's very hard to control. For an understable disc, you want something that's going to have a true fade, I mean, or lack of fade to it. Um, 
there's a reason why you throw an understable disc instead of a sidearm. If you want the disc to just bank hard at the end, you throw a sidearm. So if you walk it, walk it does that. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the combat, a little bit faster. The combat had that characteristic too that was really, really sharp. So if you walk it, walk it from RPM. Um, I basically only throw two different drivers. Um, I love the Felon, absolutely just, I mean the Felon to me, it's not an overstable disc. I mean, I'm only throwing it when I'm having to throw hard. So when I throw this disc hard, it does not fly throughout its flight over stable. It just flies straight. And then when it runs out of speed, it just falls off at the end, which means it is extremely easy to control. It's extremely easy to manipulate the angles. Uh, another piece of philosophy, uh, there's, and I don't think there's a right or wrong here. I think you want to actually, not I think, you want to be able to do both. But some people have the school of thought that you want to basically throw every disc the same way. Like learn how to throw flat. And then you buy disc to fly left, disc to fly right, disc to fly straight. Um, there's a flaw in that. And the flaw is if you took every single disc made and threw every single one of them flat, not every single flight path exists. You have to be able to also manipulate the angle of the disc as well. So what I do is, uh, which is the other kind of side of that coin which is take discs that fly true and then control the angle yourself on the disc and then you can choose a disc that has different characteristics because just doing that with straight flying discs doesn't give you every uh, possible uh, flight trajectory either but I really lean towards that I don't want to have to control a whole bunch of different discs I want something that's going to fly true I'll control the angle if I get the angle wrong I get the angle wrong but I'm not trusting the disc to do it for me uh, so I definitely very much lean towards that. So the Felon just flies straight. Um, it banks at the end. Now at slower speeds, it's definitely an overstable disc, but I'm not ever throwing this at lower speeds. I would throw the heart if I want a straight flying, or even a suspect straight flying slash overstable, a slower speed disc. If you're not throwing the Raider, you're wrong. Uh, the Raider is Just another very true flying disc. I don't know how else to explain it. I mean, I, I like discs that are consistent, that they're not squirrely. You do not have to get the angle on this disc right. I mean, typically with high speed discs, they fly farther at higher speeds, but if you get the angle wrong, they're, they fly God only knows where. And that's not the way the Raider is. The Raider just flies true. So you put it on a line, it stays on that line. Now at high speeds, it will flip up a little bit. It's a tiny bit understable out of my hand. Of course, it fades at the end, like all discs do. High-speed discs typically fade more at the end, so it does fade more than a, well, than a, like a mid-range disc for sure. But that little turn, that little bit of fade is very minor on this disc. I don't even know what the numbers say. I don't even care what the numbers say. This is just a true flying disc. I get whatever angle I want on it. Um, and that's, I mean, that's perfect. Um, I've been experimenting, this is new, with the Trespass, which is basically the same flight characteristics. It's very similar, it's a little bit slower. Um, I'm feeling there's a difference here, but I haven't quite got there, but uh, it's, it is currently in my bag, so I'm going to include it in this video. It may or may not be in the bag in the future, but I just love this disc. Now, the dumbest question anyone could ever ask about discs is, hey, what's your sidearm disc? Okay, I'm going to go off on a bit of a rant here, but this is really important when you want to excel at this game. Asking someone what their sidearm disc is, is the exact same question as walking up to somebody and saying, Hey, so what's your backhand disc? So when you drive with the backhand, which disc do you throw? Right? That would be nonsense. Everybody would know that would be silly. That's the exact same question as what's your sidearm disc. Every single disc, or every single disc in your bag is a backhand disc and a sidearm disc. If I step up to a hole, I'm right-handed and it's a typically it's a right to left hole that the Raider is the right shot for if I step up to the next hole and it was an exact mirror image of that hole then all I'm doing with the sidearm is reversing the spin of the disc I'm reversing the flight characteristics I'm gonna throw the, the exact same disc sidearm if it's a Raider hole backhand that mirror image is a Raider hole sidearm every disc in your bag is a backhand disc and a sidearm disc uh, by the way that also means throwing mid-range discs uh, you have to throw mid-range disc sidearm. If you step up to a sidearm hole and 
because you're used to throwing your destroyer or your felon sidearm because you don't have the technique to control the spin and control the angle and you want something that will consistently be overstable. Throwing that disc sidearm on a 230 foot hole would be like throwing it on the backhand. And remember the philosophy, the slowest disc you can get to the hole with? You don't want to throw a high speed disc on a short hole unless you have some weird flex shot that you have to do because you're in the woods of North Carolina. But other than that, every disc in your bag is a backhand disc and a sidearm disc. It's not backhand sidearm, it's a clockwise spinning disc and a counterclockwise spinning disc. Um, and other than that, um, that's basically what's in my bag. I've won 16 of my last 18 uh, Masters tournaments, all, all little ones, season many tiers, but um, I'm out on the road now teaching full time and I'm gonna be playing some big tournaments. I have every intention of winning some major tournaments this year. Pro uh, Grandmaster of the MP50 Division, and I'm going to do it with these discs. And uh, yeah, thanks you guys for listening. Ooh, I'm just so dynamic on another latitude that can't stand it. Yeah, I'm a rocket boy, I stay blasting off, and I was never planning on landing. Been working on my legacy yeah. since I've been a prodigy. It's probably the dog in me. I mean, honestly, ain't no one stopping me. No apologies, I'm so astonishing. I say, Innova, yeah, I've been the one. We talking trophies, dog, give me them. Championships, I'm going to give me some, and I'm going to keep on.